Hey, this is Ken Finnan at Capital Advantage Tutoring. I'm here to help you pass the SIE exam, the Series 7, the Series 6, the Series 99, the Series 24, all the FINRA exams I'm here to help you pass. A lot of my videos are on the SIE, but I'm trying to expand into the Series 7 to help even more people. Um, the Series 6, this one won't help that much on the 6, so if you're studying for the 6, you can listen to have fun because I'm so fun to listen to. If not, don't worry about this. Focus on reading the book. So a lot of people ask me to cover munis, okay? So I've done a I've done a video on revenue bonds. I'll try to attach it up here. I've done a, a video on muni bonds. I'll try to attach it over there. I'll see if I have the technology for it. Um, and that's the, the understanding suitability and all that. But everyone's freaking out about, do I have to memorize the G rules? So I'm gonna go through the first, I think like 15 or 20 of them in this video. Hopefully I don't fall asleep doing it, but I will go through them and then we'll understand them. Also, if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe and hit like. Okay, you don't have to hit like till it's done. I'm not going to make a hit like beforehand, but if you would, that'd be great. Also, I have a podcast called Blue Collar Finance that I'm dropping a new one on every Saturday, Friday or Saturday. That's where I do it. And it's not really Series 7 or SIE related but it's more about finance. So you can understand things in a very basic retail level. You know, if you don't understand something, hopefully my podcast, you listen to five, 10 minutes on something and it cleans it up a little bit in case you don't want to listen to my videos or even have to look at my ugly ass. Okay, so G rules. The first one, G1, you have to have the municipal department, the municipal underwriting, trading, investment banking, whatever you want to call it, has to be separately identified from the bank. So you have to have a separately identified division of the bank, has its own supervisors, has its own rules, and it's definitely separated from it. Okay, G2, you have to, if you wanna be a broker dealer and you wanna, and you, and you wanna actually, if you wanna be a, okay, G2, if, if you want to sell, muni bonds or make offers and sales or do the underwriting or any of that stuff as an individual you have to be qualified okay so you have to be qualified to do that which means a licensing and stuff like that and you have to have a municipal principal supervising your action so a broker dealer anyone selling it munis or trading or offers and sales and you work for a municipal broker dealer there has to be a municipal i can't say that shit a municipal principal supervisor. Okay. Now let's go through G3. How about this? So a municipal rep is a natural person. Okay. Who is affecting transactions that you have to be, if you're a municipal rep, you have to be registered as a municipal rep, which means you're passing the seven or the 50. I don't know what the 50 number is. I'll remember it later. Um, a municipal rep, I'll put it up here so I see above my head and you'd be corrected. Um, a municipal rep is a natural person, which means a human being like you or me, because you'll hear a couple of times on the exams, the word person, sometimes person refers to a legal entity. So there's a legal person and a natural person. A natural person is an individual breathing, living, heartbeat, all that crap. If it's a, uh, if it's a firm it's going to be a legal person so a municipal rep is a natural person an individual affecting transactions not a clerk not ministerial the words be, be dealing with customers making transactions even if you're cold calling you have to be registered as a rep then there's a municipal principal that's your supervisor that's another exam so the supervisor is the one overseeing the municipal reps okay There, so I can see that. Okay, G4, that is statutory disqualification. We know that one. Basically, if you violate securities rules based on the Act of 34, so what is that? Again, we don't need to know the G4 part. We need to know the fun part. So if you have any felony, if you remember, not charged, not indicted, not whatever, convicted of a felony, any felony in the last 10 years, or any securities or ethics or financial misdemeanor in the last 10 years, remember something. It is convicted, not charged, not indicted, okay? 
It has to be convicted of a felony in the last 10 years or a securities misdemeanor, securities, ethics, or financial misdemeanor in the last 10 years. Okay, G5. That's a song, G5. I'll, maybe I can play that. Probably have a copyright problem. So here's the thing. You can't break rules. That's all it's saying is that you can't break the rules and you cannot be associated with a firm if you're already banned. That's what G5 is. Really, that song is stuck in my head. Um, hopefully, all you're singing it now and it implicates an earworm for you. So now, G5, you can't break the rules or be associated with a firm if you're already banned. Makes sense. Okay. G6, you need a fidelity bond. If you're a broker dealer, you need a fidelity bond. That's in case you commit fraud or do something wrong, there's money set aside. And we also have G7. So G7 is every municipal securities dealer has to have information on its associates, just like your U4. So when you guys work at a FINRA firm, you have to fill out your U4. That's gonna have like your name, your social security number, where you've worked for 10 years, where you've lived for five years, any kind of disclosures and stuff like that. That's all G7 is saying is that basically you have to have a U4, a fully formed U4 filled out. And then we have G8. G8 is just books and records having to be held by the broker dealer. Just follow the FINRA rules. It's so much easier. They're not gonna make you differentiate between MSRB and FINRA. FINRA is almost everything's three years, complaints are four. Six years are general ledger, um, the blotter, the general ledger, customer statements, stock records, stuff like that. That's six years. And anything else that is about on, let's do it this way. Anything else that is about forming articles of incorporation, the corporate charter, anything to do with actually forming the company that is the broker dealer has to be for a lifetime. Also, anything that has to do with the employee, the records have to be kept for three years after they leave. G9 is basically just saying what G8 says, you have to keep a preservation of records. G10, is basically just investor and municipal advisory client education and protection. So basically saying that you have to let a customer know at least every year that you are registered and that there's a there's certain education material available that you can get usually on the MSRB website. That's all you're saying. So G10 is saying you have to show them that you're registered, registered, well, that's crazy, registered. And you have to say, oh, here's some education material to help you out on the MSRB website. So G11 is about primary offerings, you know, the whole competitive, negotiated, all that stuff, and a lot of other stuff inside the syndicate. So also it talks about priority of customer orders, which you do need to know. Again, we don't need to know that it's G11, we need to know the order. So when you're issuing a bond and you're the underwriter and you're bidding to be the underwriter and they haven't chosen anyone yet, you can actually sell the bonds. Those bonds are called any bond, any customer, that places an order before your syndicate has been announced as a winner, or if even they are announced as a winner, are called pre-sale orders. They get first priority. After they announce our syndicate, woo-woo, as the winner, any orders received after that are group orders. Then designated <clears throat> is if my customer doesn't want me to share my profits or my commissions with the other broker dealers in the syndicate, those are designated. And then the last one is member orders. Member orders are orders from the members of the syndicate or FINRA members or MSRB dealers who want to buy on the bond, buy the bonds from us. They come last. So remember the order, PGDM, <clears throat> pro golfers don't miss, pretty girls drive Mercedes, pretty girls date me, haha. All those things, okay? PGDM, pre-sale group designated member. That's gonna be in the G11, okay. Okay, G12, that's the uniform practice code. That's how dealers, broker dealers and stuff deal with each other, okay? So the way that goes is that what we're doing here is that if I deal with you and I transact with you, that's T plus two, okay? So T plus two is settlement. Maybe what good delivery is. Can I take mutilated certificates? If I don't, do I, do I don't, whatever it is. And what happens if I accept them and I shouldn't have? If it's the wrong amount, all the dealings with each other. And that's what works out with um, G12. Okay, G13 is all about quotes regarding municipal securities. You have to make sure they're bona fide 
bona fide, people say. Bona fide just means real. So if you're going to place a quote or you're going to have a repeat a quote or anything, you have to be reasonably assured that you're going to do that with a reasonable basis. I mean, if you place a bid and then cancel it, well, as long as you meant to place it and you w did want to buy the bond and you did want to make a bid, we're good to go. Okay. So as long as you're bona fide and they have to be, they have to be like you actually want to do that. That's where they come up with this. Have you ever seen the thing where it says, oh, he makes a bid for one hour with a five minute recall? All that means is that I make a bid for your bonds, say 850, and I say they're good for an hour. You can go try to buy the bonds for 840, 845, 9, whatever you can buy them for. I will buy them from you at 850. You make a little bit of money. But the five minute recall means that if during that hour another customer comes in and wants to sell them to me <clears throat> at a lower price, I will call you up and say, hey, listen, you got five minutes to make a decision. I got a better offer. I can't lie. I have to do it when I have an offer, but I'm giving you five minutes to basically shit or get off the job. Okay. Okay. G14. So what happens here is that this is all about reporting the sales and purchases. So if we report the trade, we have to, one, believe that it actually happened, not that it's fictitious, and we have to follow the rules. That's why they have a thing called RTRS, Real-Time Reporting System. Muni bonds, you have 15 minutes, just like most bonds, you have 15 minutes to report it. That's under G14. They may change that one day, but we have a 15-minute rule to report trades, and we have to truly believe that they actually happened, and we have to provide the right trans transaction information on the report. Okay, G15 is how we deal with the customer, what we have to do for the customer. For the most part, it's about confirms, what we have to tell you. So like when you have to pay for it and what's on a confirm. So let's talk about on a confirmation, on a muni, you have to have a couple things. The parties in the deal, how we acted, whether we're an agent for you, agent for somebody else, principal for us, principal for someone else. We have to have the name, address, and telephone number of the broker dealer. Basically, we have to have the price that you did it at. We have to have whether we are a, basically, we did the agent part. I already said that. We have to say whether I have a control relationship. If there's call features, if it's at, if it's X legal, <clears throat> I have to say what you paid, what your yield does. Now, remember this. This is where the yield to worst comes in because you have to say, okay, you have to have the yield and the dollar price. So if it's a discount bond, you're going to quote the yield to maturity. If it's a premium bond, you're going to quote the yield to call. If it's callable, if it's not callable, then we're not going to do it. Catastrophe recall doesn't count. Any kind of thing that you think that has to do, that you think the customer would need to know will be on the confirm. So again, name of the customer. Um, we have to have the account number on it. We have to have the name and address of the broker dealer, how we acted, whether agent or principal. We have to put our markup or markdown or commission. If it's principal, it's a markup or markdown. If it's an agent, it's a commission, okay? We have to do the yield. We have to put the dollar price. We have to do the settlement date. We have to put the net amount of money that you put in, stuff like that. That's all basically in the book somewhere, but that's G15. Hey, guys, thanks a lot for listening. That's the first 15. Please like and subscribe. Share this if you think I'm helping. Find me on Reddit. Tell me I'm doing great things. I'm under Cap Advantage Tutoring there. And feel free to join my podcast, Blue Collar Finance. It's not test related. It's all about the basics of the business, okay? Thank you very much and have a great day.